and this one's about falling out. Uh, looks like a little cosmetic container. No embossing. Oh, okay. What's going on here? Oh, wow. I'm in Balfour, North Dakota, and just behind me is where the old hotel once stood. The town was incorporated in 1899, and the hotel showed up on a 1910 map. It burned right around the World War I era, and there were no other structures on the property. I got permission to excavate the backyard in search of artifacts, so I'll take a walk around and see what I can find. Well, here's the lot. There's not much left here but prairie grass. You will see these markers. I've Use these to mark some dimensions of what I believe could be some old trash pits. I felt some glass and stove ashes down there, so we'll see what's going on. Getting into something. Noticed a few pieces sticking out here. Uh, looks like a. Oh wow! Oh, that's a tooled top. Oh, that's that's awesome. That's pre World War One. Looks like some kind of toiletry bottle. You know what? I just looked over. Wow! What's this say? It says druggist. J. O. Peterson, druggist. Minneapolis. Look at that. So. Yeah, this thing made its way down the rails. All right. Huh. Looks like a little, uh, almost looks like a little poison type bottle. That's a, okay. Yeah, it's a pharmaceutical, uh, PD and Company. That's, uh, Park Davis and Company. They were out of uh, Detroit, Michigan, I believe. Kind of, oh, I see some color on it. Whoa, that is beautiful. That's a, uh, got some stamping. New Wharf Pottery from England. You can see it's a, uh, looks like some kind of uh, flow blue. They call it flow blue because the blue actually uh, runs out of where the pattern's supposed to be. And it looks like a, uh, Machine made shoe polish bottle. All right, what do we have here? Oh, it's a tooled top. Ham's beer from St. Paul. That's uh, still in business today, I believe. Now, the cast iron pipe, this thing was giving me some trouble. I tried it loose with a shovel. Let's see. Looks like a, uh, could be an old pump. Maybe a pump for a well at the hotel. It must have been, actually. Oh, that's really cool. I've been working my way around this. I think it's, yeah, it's ready to come out. Looks like a, Tool top beer bottle. Sometimes these will have the brewery name stamped into it. Uh, this one doesn't. See a glass company. It was made by the uh, Streeter Bottle and Glass Company of Streeter, Illinois. This is pre prohibition. I'd put it at about 1905, 1910. It's like some kind of, uh, some kind of hair product. Sometimes, yeah, okay, this one's got something going on here. Boston, it's a uh, Harmony of Boston. Okay, it's 
It's got some kind of uh, pattern on it there. Very faint embossing. Got a tooled top. This could be a drugstore bottle. There's some more stuff there. Oh yeah, I got a uh, MD company. Okay, this is significant. I've never dug one from this company before. It's just a blank drugstore bottle. It's got a reinforced lip. May have another beer. This has some really nice aqua color to it though. Uh, that's beautiful. A blue aqua. It's uh, made by the American Bottle Company. I will note, I've been finding fragments of this stuff. It's uh, oh yeah, Crown Hotel China. So there we go, that's the mark of the beast with these hotel pits. They had this really thick ironstone stuff and it was very plain, just plain whiteware. Looks like another prescription style bottle. Uh, what do we have? There's no uh, druggist mark on it. It's an aseptic oval, an aseptic oval style. It's circa, I'd say 1908 to 1916. Some kind of food container. Uh, these are never embossed. I would have had a paper label on it. And a little early machine made shoe polish bottle. This pit is absolutely loaded. No, we have hit some undigested seeds. I believe we're digging in an old outhouse pit. Here's a, a prescription bottle, uh, LED company. Hmm. It's like a little, uh, maybe toiletry type piece. There's a it's early machine made, no embossing. This one here. Looks like uh, some kind of oil bottle. Oh yeah, Kickapoo, Kickapoo oil. This was a uh, Kickapoo Indian oil is what they called it. I believe it was marketed by uh, the Healy and Bigelow company. some great age. It's like a, some kind of condiment container of some sort. It's got a tooled top. And may have a prescription bottle. Okay, it's a little uh, medicine, maybe a liquor flask. No embossing. This would have had a paper label on it. All kinds of stuff down here. Wow. This, I believe, is English made. It's a uh, shoe fly style flask. It's a, a nice aqua. These are almost always clear. I'm, I'm certain this was English made. Huh. It's like a liquor flask. Some kind of a amber colored thing. Oh wow. It's like a Mikado style, maybe an eagle style. It's got a tooled top. This could be an interesting one here. I dug a test hole down and we may be getting close to bottom. I'm not 100% sure. Looks like we have uh, some kind of jelly tumbler. And this one's about falling out. Uh, 
Looks like a little cosmetic container. No embossing. Oh, okay. What's going on here? Oh, wow. Hoff's German Liniment. Goodrich, Goodrich and Jennings. That's really cool. It's got some strong embossing and a tooled top. Oh yeah, solid seed layer. Definitely an old outhouse fit. like a another little unembossed liquor flask of some sort. We may have an intact plate. There's a some markings on it. Yeah. All right. Uh, Charles Meekin, Hanley, England. This was no doubt used in the hotel. They likely had a restaurant running connection with it. like some kind of prescription bottle or a, another one of these whiskeys. Uh, whiskey medicine has kind of a strap side. Oh, this has some kind of ornate design. Let's see. I'm not seeing any stamping on it. Hmm. UD Company on bottom, I'm not sure, but it's a fancy cold cream container. Solid use layer. This blue thing here, okay, it's one of these painted cups. Try to get this thing cleaned off. It's broken, but uh, has a really cool uh, like painted floral pattern on it. And I love that blue, it's beautiful. here. Looks like a shoe fly flask. A shoe fly liquor flask. No embossing on it. Oh wow. This is an advertising vase is broken these were a like a souvenir has a nd on it could have been a souvenir from balfour maybe we can find the other pieces i think this pit might continue let's see we got a old listerine bottle it's a tooled top that's the same product they still sell today Maybe some kind of prescription bottle. Looks like a unembossed, no glass company mark piece. And I think this one's a liquor flask. Let's see. Oh, yeah, it still has the glass stopper in it. Yeah, an unembossed liquor flask, mail order likely. And, oh wow, that's awesome. It's a uh, Ironstone China coffee cup. Uh, must have been dropped in by mistake. It looks like it's in good shape.
another uh, prescription bottle. No embossing on this one, it's got a tooled top. Oh yeah, well, I couldn't find the edge, so I decided to probe across and found out we've got a ways to go. I put these markers in where I believe the actual edge is, so we'll get this opened up. Just a foot below the surface. Looks like there may be a beer bottle. Let's see. That's intact. Oh, Ham St. Paul. Tooled top, you can see it's a uh, shoulder embossed there from the Ham's Brewing Company. This dates back to about 1910. Oh. A very utility wear coffee cup. Look how thick that thing is. Looks like the uh, handle broke off. That's likely why it was discarded. And another. Let's see. Nothing inside. Yeah, this one's a. Uh, I don't know if this one had a handle. This one was uh, just discarded. Okay, there's all kinds of stuff wedged in here. Okay, a three-in-one oil bottle. It's embossed on the side. I dig a lot of these. I believe uh, this company eventually evolved into WD-40 or was acquired by the WD-40 company. <laughs> wow. These aren't found intact very often. This is a stoneware lid to a crock. Looks like this would have been a maybe two or three gallon. And some kind of, what's going on here? Uh, Florida water, Murray and Landman druggists, New York. I believe uh, Florida water is some kind of medicine of some sort. Oh, Lee and Perrin's. Yeah, Worcestershire sauce. This is the same company that's still producing uh, which is your sauce today. Not even through the cap layer yet. We've got a few more bottles. Ah, seems like it has some decent depth, likely uh, similar to the other side. Got a early machine made, uh, I believe some kind of condiment or food bottle. No embossing. Looks like some kind of a liquor flask, uh, mail order liquor. Uh, the Bonnie Brothers had a ton like this back in the day. Uh, could have been a Bonnie Brothers or some other mail order liquor service. And a prescription bottle. We're gonna get lucky. No. This is an unusual shape though. Oh wait. Harmony of Boston. Very, very small embossing on the bottom of it there. You can see it's a I believe this was some kind of toiletry company. It could have been a lotion or hand cream of some sort. Kind of little uh, early machine made piece. Looks like a little soda, possibly uh, some kind of water bottle.
Oh, hey. Cold cream container. Uh, no embossing. That looks like a Mikado style liquor flask, uh, tooled top. And I believe an eagle style flask with a tooled top. Some embossing of this beer. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Let's see. Looks like it's a early machine made Schmidt beer from St. Paul. It's a, I put this one at right about 1910. Definitely a pre World War I era. Like a yeah, liquor medicine bottle, a tool top. Looks like a liquor flask. Yeah, uh, eagle style with a tool top. Oh, something directly under it. It's like a blank extract bottle, also a tool top. Uh, no, that's a that's a tool top beer. Hmm. Yeah. No embossing. Uh, may have a prescription bottle. Yeah. No embossing on this one either. up here. Is that gonna be a beer? Tooled crown top. Oh, what company made this thing? Made by the Streeter Bottle and Glass Company of Streeter, Illinois. Oh, I noticed this sticking out of the back fill. Looks like a plain jar. Might actually be some writing on it. Horlicks. Horlicks. I huh, wonder how the family got that last name. There's a few more. One of them's down into the water table. Uh, this one looks like a liquor flask. Okay. Uh, tool top eagle style. See here. Some kind of prescription bottle. Ah, it's getting muddy down here, slippery. Uh, no embossing. Circa 1905. And I felt the shovel rubbing up against something down here. See if I can find it. Here we go. It's like a little liquor bottle. No embossing, still has a partial cork in it. That's kind of cool. It's like another liquor flask. We've hit a layer of bottles here. There's also one down in the depths. Well, that's kind of cool. It's got a honey amber color to it. Either an eagle or Mikado style flask. Another little uh, liquor or medicine has the spot for the paper label right there. Yeah, 
and looks like a beer. And yeah, most of the bottles are fine in here, are alcohol related. Uh, this is strange, it has a C on the bottom. I'm not sure if that stands for the glass company. I've, I've never seen that. It's a tooled crown top beer though. And yeah, another one of these medicine or liquor flasks, no embossing. Now, there's one down here. Actually, another one surfaced right here. Another one. All right, where was it? There it is. I feel it's just smooth down there. Here we go. Feels like it could be a beer bottle. Yeah, tooled crown top beer. Oh, okay. John Gund, La Crosse, Wisconsin, established 1854. I've dug a good few of these. Uh, if it would have had a paper label on it. I managed to dig a little well down in here where the water drained into and this piece exposed. Let's see. Looks like another beer bottle. Uh, okay, another John Gund, the tooled crown top. Some kind of a liquor flask. Yeah, okay. It would have had a paper label on it. I think we're just about at bottom, but I haven't figured out how far across this thing goes. There's a, still some bottles in here. It's like a tool top prescription bottle. Could be a Rex Oval style or something similar. top Mikado style flask. Another little liquor flask of some sort. Good few flasks in here. Wasn't finding as many as I usually do. Uh, in a hotel pit anyway. Tooled top eagle style flask. Uh, tooled top liquor or medicine. Tooled top prescription bottle. some glass back there. Let's see. Okay, got a tool top liquor court. Top Rex Oval style prescription drugstore bottle. Uh, tool top liquor, maybe medicine.
and another. Oh, it looks like a early machine made ketchup bottle. Classic, made by Dr. P. Farney, Chicago. Now, I'm not sure if I've seen this embossing on this side of one of these little ones. Forney's oil. I've dug so many of these things, I've never dug one of these before. I was clearing it out with a shovel and saw a flask of some sort. Looks like, a, okay, an Olympia style, I believe. An 1898 patent. This, this is the first one of these we found here. Circa 1905, like the rest of the stuff, I suppose. All right. Well, let's see. Broken prescription bottle. Balfour, North Dakota. Whoa. The Miller Drug Company pharmacist, Balfour, North Dakota. This is the first one of these ever seen. Um, too bad it's broken. Wow. top liquor bottle. An unembossed prescription bottle. prescription bottle. This pit's done. Here's the hall. Was Definitely a pit used by the hotel. This thing was big. Got a variety of pieces here, some toiletries, some condiment containers, a bunch of liquor flasks. That's fairly typical with the hotel. Some beer bottles, possibly a soda up top. A good amount of prescription drugstore bottles, including that one from Balfour. Cold cream container, some ironstone, Everything dated back to around 1905. I'll get this filled back in. <laughs> 